Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. The Braves get their guy. The Angels get all of their guys. The A's and the Rangers made a trade and a lot more. Let's do it. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Jimmy. Sitting next to me is Jake. Trev is joining us from California. And we got producer Bug Bug Dude in the booth. That's my headphones that are all the way down now. Hello, hello, and hello. All right, we're all good. Jake, how you doing? I'm good. James, Trevor, Big Baby David, everyone at home. What's going on? Uh, baseball season. It's baseball season. Foosball's it's, over. My it's baseball season. Se- Susan, mine and Trevor's Bucks took home the title. What a year it was! Um, so yeah, man, I'm I'm excited. We uh we looked at the sheet today. There's a lot, lot of little moves, and there's gonna be a lot of little moves leading up till spring training. Baseball. Trev, how are you? I'm great. I, um, you know, obviously the Super Bowl was this weekend and I celebrated uh, the holiday that I've made up in my head. It's the Monday after the Super Bowl. It's a national holiday. So I celebrated that by doing pretty much nothing. Um, and it was a great day. But now I'm ready. Like Jake said, it's baseball season. S-Z-N capitals. And here we go. I mean, we are a week away, a week away from pitchers and catchers reporting. I've been saying goodbyes. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And there's a ton of moves. There's a ton of moves that happened, but there's still a ton of moves that are going to happen. So baseball is about to be in fuego. The that guys on what, fire, baby. The guys are showing up to the spring training facilities. The sun is shining. The grass is growing. They're mowing the grass to clean it up and prep, just like you should by when you use Manscaped. They're supporting this episode. They are the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over their technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide. Jake is one of those 2 million. Join the movement for all your below-the-waist grooming needs. Jake, tell everyone the shape you've been trimming up down there. I've got a baseball down there. All the seams, 22 stitches each side. Yeah, noodle actually helps. Yeah. It's. Uh, I was gonna say something so gross. I've I'm got. Not say uh, it. I've got the full commissioner signature down there. It's. Uh, it's a real treat. Oh wow! You have the signature. Yeah, that is bad. It looks ass. like an imprint of a baseball. So if you want to do that to yourself, go get the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to advanced skin safe technology pioneered by manscaped when i tell you this is premium i mean premium the battery will last up to 90 minutes and you know jake does when he's getting all those stitches that's a lot of stitches a lot of signatures a lot of time you spend down there no it's actually with the manscaped products it's very quick jim very quick and easy oh okay great but for beginners they can use all the time They've upgraded to a 7,000 RPM motor with quiet stroke technology. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code baseball at manscaped.com. 20% off plus free shipping. Code baseball at manscaped.com. Go clean yourself up. You know, summer's hey, coming. Really we're hot and sweaty. It- Clean up. It's a weird thing to talk about. I know, you know, we're we're trying to do a baseball show talking about it. I'm just gonna say it really works. Yeah. What's weird about it? I think we need to get rid of that weird stigma. Clean it up down there. I love that. I love that. I can tell you some people who use Manscaped. Levi, David Malazzi, Nicholas Cisnero Cisneros. Sam Lewis, Dylan Bush, Nick Valenti, Lisa Kawhi, all of our most recent patrons. They all use Manscaped, for sure, without doubt in my brain. Thanks, new patrons. Thanks, new patrons. Go to patreon.com slash Media. All right, first topic. Ozuna returns to Atlanta. Four-year deal worth $65 million. There is an option for a fifth year that would bring it to $80 million. Big deal. One of the last big deals we may see this offseason. Ozuna goes back to the Braves. I like it. 
The Braves were almost uh, World Series attendees. They were th- up three to one on the Dodgers. They have a great team in a big window. They're retaining the talent that helped get them there. Ozuna's like in his press conference. The one thing he said to the GM was like, "What took you so long? Like, why did why did this take so long?" <laughs> Which was a good quote. Jake, not surprised by this, right? No, I mean we've we've kind of been waiting for Atlanta to make their their move for a while. Everyone had been somewhat assuming Ozuna. There had been Chris Bryant rumors for a while. They were. Atlanta was kind of rumored for everything because they had moves to make in this this spot. I know you know the players I'm about to mention don't play the same position, but they had Donaldson, and then they went to Ozuna, and so you know that righty masher position. And man, he was so awesome last year. He finished sixth in the MVP voting. Uh, the The biggest thing that screwed him was that damn first baseman of his, Freddie Freeman, going nut job. But I mean, he. He led the NL in homers last year. He led the NL in RBIs. He led the NL in total bases. Um, you know, his career numbers don't jump off the map, but actually the last four years, and I I was tough on Ozuna last offseason. I thought going from him, from Donaldson, would hurt them a little bit. He raked, and if you do his numbers over the last four years, I mean, 287, 355, 860 OPS, 100-plus uh, homers. So he... Uh, He's a beast. He fits into the vibe of that team. Mar celebrate good times. Come on. Yeah, they they had to do this. I mean, if you look at their lineup now, I mean, they pretty much got what they had last year, which was an explosive offense. And I think really, I don't know how many teams were in on Marcel. I think maybe some AL teams were like, "Hey, let's see if we can get a DH going here." And when that turned out not to be uh, not going to happen for the 2021 season, I think the Braves. Maybe another two, three teams maybe were in on him. So I think that's what took so long, Marcel. I think the Braves were waiting the market out a little bit. But, uh, yeah, man, he's been putting the numbers up. We kind of have to take a step back from the 2020 numbers because we do that for guys that struggle. So I also do that for guys that have excellent seasons in 2020. Take it back a little bit. You're not going to expect him to lead the National League in homers this year. But a force right in the middle of that lineup, a veteran guy, the Braves are scary. The Braves are really scary. Azuna mashed fastballs last year and was awful against breaking balls. He had a 50% whiff rate on breaking balls. When he swung in a breaking ball, he missed 50% of the time. Uh, on a fastball, when he put a fastball in play, he had a 402 batting average. Not bad. Pretty good. That doesn't, his whole career isn't that way, but last year, just sitting, sitting fastballs, hitting homers. Not a bad way to do it. Him and uh, from that fr- Fangraphs website, keep looking at him and Freddie rated out as the number one and two hitters <laughs> in baseball last year. So good, good for those guys. Yeah, and it's it's still a weird thing when we look at the Braves roster, and we've we've got the the TPPs coming soon, the Trevor Plouffe team profiles and projections coming soon. It's still a weird thing. It feels like they're one big bad away, like Darno is still in the middle of that lineup, and he's been really good, but... Um, I don't know, man. You, you, know, you think they need another bat? I'm I'm just saying if we wanted to talk about them toe-to-toe with the Dodgers or toe-to-toe with the Padres, I do think that we'd... we'd like, imagine if these Braves did the Arenado trade. I think we would be talking about them as potential NL favorites. And, hey, let's take a step back. I mean... You know that's getting one of the best third basemen to ever play the game. So I'm not saying they could have done that, but I think we could be talking about them more toe to toe with the the Dodgers and the Padres. And right now, uh, I don't know. I mean, they went. Didn't they take the Dodgers up to three one, and the Dodgers came back? Dodgers didn't get so they scared went to- down three. They went toe to toe with them. Yeah, they were. And win- I do they think- were went away. But I see what Jake's saying. But it's because I mean, Darno. Had an amazing season last year, but he was a journeyman catcher, like up until that kind of. I get that he's in the middle. Oh, yeah, of the, he's in the middle of the done. lineup. What's that? They might not. To your point, they might not be done. Well, who's? Yeah, I don't know who else is out and, there. I uh, think they're good enough now to start the season for sure, and like our big, big contender. And then maybe at the, I, mean, I think this team is ready to start the season and is looking really good. And then at the deadline, they can look for a bat or an arm or whatever they need then. Like, I don't think they need to do anything more this offseason. The Braves look great. Their their top of their lineup is awesome. Acuna, Freeman, Ozuna, uh, Albies, 
Hey, didn't Dansby have a great year last year too? Like, hopefully Dansby that all had trans- a great like, year. They need him to repeat that. They need Pache to come up. I mean, he came up and looked really, really good last year. So if he comes up and adds another spark to that offense and defense, and then look, Justin Turner's still out there. Mm. A guy like See, that, I mean, they're looking that. to upgrade third base. I mm. would love that. I mean, they've also so I do like the young guys on this team, Austin Riley and Pache, who are both penciled in the starting lineup right now. And you know, hey, one of them hits, maybe one of them misses. Who knows? We'll see. Maybe they both hit, and uh, Atlanta will come laughing at me. But if you put like Justin Turner right now, I mean, th- this team could go six, seven deep with any lineup in baseball, and they've got a lot of the same pitch and coming back, plus Charlie Morton, plus hopefully Soroka back in midseason. Like, that's when if they made, like, they're a move away from being, like, a legit number one team in baseball contender. They're still really good. I think they're still the favorites in the NLE, so I don't want our Braves and mansplain pod girls coming at us, but um, I, I just feel like we keep waiting for this, like, Braves fully engaged like Death Star move, and I I don't think it's happened yet. Justin Turner is a, is a big bat. I think people are a little poo pooing him because he's getting older, and because the Dodgers had so many big players that because he's not like you know the top 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 guy in Dodger blue. People, I mean, for the last you want to know Justin Turner's slash line for the last eight seasons, Trev. Mm. Last yes. eight seasons combined, Justin Turner has a three hundred one batting average in today's age. That's crazy. Eight seasons. I didn't know that. 301 batting average. He has a 378 on base percentage over the last eight seasons. A 495 slugging, an 873 OPS, and a 136 OPS plus. 36% better than his contemporaries over the last eight years. If the Braves were to add a bat like that at third, and I don't think they need to, but that if they wanted to be like, hey, we want to do a little death punch as well, everyone else is doing it, that would be a fun move. I don't, I don't know if they will. Well, they- They've been rumored to be in on Chris Bryant. Uh, I think Arenado even, they, they kick the yeah. tires on yeah. him a little bit. So they're looking at that third base position maybe is not as a strength, obviously. And I think they are seeing, like, hey, look, yeah, we got Ozuna back. We got Darno coming back. But we can't expect those years again. I guess here's here's what I'm saying. The Dodgers went out and they got Mookie Betts before last season, and that was like the holy crap. Like, the Dodgers are the favorite. It's happening. I kind of want the Braves to make that move, and I know Mookie Betts don't come available a lot. Nolan Arenados don't come available a lot, but that price tag seemed pretty attainable. Everyone was laughing at it. So I don't know, and I don't know if they end up in on Chris Bryant or Turner. Uh, you know, I I saw some of them going Trevor Story weeds on me. Believe in Dansby, you know, my doppelganger, Vandy guy. He can do it. Um, happy for the Braves. Happy for Ozuna. Keep hitting, Big Bear. Keep got, hitting. Then, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the the payroll. They got room, man. Yeah, like if they're going to use that shit as a, a soft cap. They got room. Yeah, so plenty of room. Go go do it. Get Turner. That'd be fun. Steal him. Red hair. Those unis. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. They would play. right now. I'm looking. This is on Fangraphs. Tell me if I'm wrong, but they're at 156 million. That leaves a ton of room. Yeah. They they don't. Uh, I think this is. Is this Freddie's last year in his contract? But yeah, that that's the whole thing with the Braves. They locked up uh, Cunha and Albies, and this is their window. Like, yeah. So I. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Next up, yeah, someone's we- gonna have to tell us. I just want to add one thing. Sorry, someone's gonna have to tell us because I know they're like that publicly traded Turner. franchise where their their financials are available. So like, there might be some different kind of cap for this team that they abide by. So I don't know. I'm just saying in the general luxury tax threshold, they have plenty of room. My research says they have 50 over 56 mil in luxury tax space. One year, 56 mil. Give it to Justin Turner. Bauer. Bauer to the Braves. (laughs) Bauer. We did have a trade over the weekend as well. The A's traded Chris Davis to the Rangers for Elvis Andrews. Um, This trade there's a lot of other A's are getting uh, shortstop Elvis Andrews, thirteen million dollars, and catcher Aramis Garcia. The Rangers are getting DH Chris Davis, catcher Jonah Heim, and right hand pitcher Dane Acker. Mm. This trade is the eighth and ninth place members of your fantasy baseball league 
who know they're out of the playoffs, just bored, wishing they could still be around and being like, well, I got an extra shortstop. I was looking around the league. You don't have one. You want to just make something happen here? And then they did it. Um, now, the A's are actually a good team, so I don't mean that they're like the eighth place. This trade does nothing for no one. It saves the Rangers some money, and the A's get a guy to stand in the shortstop position, and that's about it. I mean, this, for such names, five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, such names to be involved, and my reaction was just like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Got anything else? Any difference? Trev, these are your guys, man. I, I love both of these guys. I got to spend much more time with Crush, um, like a phenomenal human being, and some of the biggest pop you're ever going to see in the big leagues. Like his oppo pop is ridiculous. He hits balls where just you're not supposed to be able to hit balls. And then Elvis obviously leaves a legacy in Texas. What I found interesting about this trade was the teams got a memo about deadening the baseball. Next day, the A's are go. They say, "Hey, we got a guy that has power, and that's kind of his only tool. Let's ship him to the Rangers and get a shortstop who we kind of need a shortstop." So it seems to me like the A's were like, "Hey, here's an opportunity. You guys know how I feel about the Rangers." Seems to me that they kind of duped him a little bit. Is that fair to say? Who duped who? The Rangers duped the A's. The Rangers are getting the better half of this trade. IMO. I don't know. I mean, Elvis Andrews has been bad, bad with the bat. Yes, but let's go back to him being a shortstop, and the A's needed a yes. shortstop, and the Rangers were just moving him off. Short. Go, go back, <laughs> right? But that's because they had Kiner Falefa, and they wanted to move on as a franchise. Elvis Andrews, his last full season at shortstop, twenty nineteen, he was a two WAR player. Which, hey, at the shortstop position, that's still valuable. So he only played 29 games last year. Elvis Andrews, we pretend, you know, it seems like we've known him for forever from those Texas teams. He's 32 years old. Um, So I don't don't know how much he has in the bag at shortstop. Chris Davis has also been bad for Oakland. So both of these guys had been money pits. The A's do classic A's stuff. They get money back. They basically swap bad contracts, and they get a shortstop out of this, which the shortstop market looked like it had been closing down. So if Oakland gets Elvis Andrews to stand at shortstop for 130 games this year and he could be a positive war player, that's essentially a win from them from where they were with Chris Davis. And going on to the Texas side of it, we've been eyeing the Texas Rangers rosters, hint, Team profile and projections coming soon um, And you know at least Chris Davis is a threat That's what we've always liked about him uh, He's fallen off recently but at least he scares you Which hey hey, maybe Joey Gallo gets walked and put on first base And, base and Chris, Chris Davis is scary But I don't know I, Again your initial analogy Jim was, is kind of close to it It's slop for slop but I don't hate I call those guys slop stop well, they're just at they're, this point. Both teams are both teams are like, hey, I got a DH who hasn't hit for two years, but maybe he can get better. You want to try him out? And they're like, well, we got a shortstop that hasn't hit for three years. You can try him out, and then they swap positions, and they're both banking on the same thing to happen. I think you guys are being mean to Elvis here a little bit. I, mean, I, I defended that, Elvis a little bit. I'd like to. Yeah, say Yeah, you did defend him a little bit. I think he's going to be. He doesn't have to be the defensive wizard of years past because guess who he has to his right? He's got Matt Chapman who has more range than anybody. I'm fine with his defense. I, I mean, I didn't not. They moved him off short, but, but offensively, he's going to be fine for you. He's, no, he's like, not. like Jake said. He's going. He's going to bring. He's going to. I mean, 2019. He had a he had a 707 OPS. I know it's not great, but yeah, but considered what, what, all short. Stops, what was his OPS plus? Like 75, 78. Because it's it's got no pop. It's all it's all. He had Twelve homers. Yeah, I mean, he still, he still gave you two point two offensive war that year, stop. Jim. So it's not all about that. I think he. I think this is a great deal for the A's. I think they did a great, a great job here. I would have just brought back Simeon. They didn't have money. They right. do. They're lying. They say they don't. They say and they you don't. know. You know <laughs> they that they, they weren't. I mean, yeah, I'm sure they would have rather traded for Lindor, but like you're not you a know, fan of fantasy. They're doing. The they, they're doing, doing, it. doing yeah. it. They're being the Simeon's, A's. Man. Simeon's thirty percent better than Andrews. Bat, who? Simeon, thirty. That's thirty percent better. Bat. Simeon's over a the last lot better years. player. No I know. One's denying that. So I'm just saying the A's got worse. 
by this move? Uh, not over their current shortstop. Simeon's already gone. Yes, but there's other players out there. I mean, who? More trades. There's uh, shortstops next year. I don't know. Bring back Simeon. If you're an A's fan, like you'd rather have Simeon. It, yes, but it's not on the table. He's on the Blue Jays. I mean, it was also on the Jim, table before also he Jim. went to the Blue Jays. Simeon, Simeon was a below average OPS plus every single year of his career except for one. Every single year. So it's not like they're going from It's a need Trevor for a need. Story this doesn't to, make the A's better. It fills up a hole defensively. It's a weird trade. I think it makes him a little better. It's a it's financial tr- transaction. The Texas Rangers were in need of an offensive threat. The A's were in need of a shortstop. Yeah, I'm happy for Chris. Maybe he needs to change the change scenery, man. But I do like this move for the A's. I do. I, I think Elvis is a... He'll still bring you a few wins. That's what I think. Shortstop is nice with Chapman to his right. But they have him for two years now. But again, I want to state these guys are awesome, awesome people as well too. So, um, no one's culture culture wise, like it's a even swap. I believe like I believe it's uh, two years, and then Andrews has a player option, so it's kind of three. Yeah, it's a vesting player option, so they might have Andrews for three years oh, with some big vesting. money. I think there's like thirty mil attached. So if you're going to spend that much money, just give Simeon a deal. You're in a window here to win. Well, they also got off of Davis's. Davis is making 16 mil this year and Texas sent over money. And if we know the Oakland A's, I wouldn't be shocked if they, you know, mess with a vesting player option. Yeah, I wonder what it is. You can get there. Wish the A's didn't act like they were cheap. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, when is someone from Silicon Valley going to buy these dudes? And like The A's owner is one of the richest warrior. owners, Trev. The A's owner is rich. He's a Calvin Klein guy, right? I believe right? he. I believe for the gap. I believe he usually shows up in like the top section of owners. Elvis Andrews option for all the diehards: five hundred fifty plate appearances in twenty twenty two, which is like a full season, or <laughs> one thousand one hundred plate appearances in twenty one and twenty two combined. So they'll just fuck it, with that. It, well, it also looks like because he's now been traded, the option vested. This oh, is twenty twenty three option. In? The line below that. 2023 option becomes a player option with trade or waiver claim converted to player option. Oh, okay. So they are in? So they're in, so maybe that's why they got sent the 15 million or whatever. So they're paying million. So they're paying 28 million for Elvis Andrews? Well, they get off the Davis money and they get 13 and a half million back to. But say they say they were just going to pay trade Davis for a different need and then just pay Marcus Simeon. Well, Davis is dead money too. That's the other thing you got to factor in. Like, yeah, they paid them money to take Chris Davis. They're paying twenty eight million for Elvis Andrews to play shortstop. Marcus Simeon signed a one year eighteen million. You think if the A signed to, gave him a two year something and then also <laughs> You're not doing traded perfect turkey math? Yeah, How? I don't know about that math, but you are right. He, he is the take eighth Chris richest Davis owner out of it. Baseball. They could have traded him. Chris Davis is a huge part of it. But take but this trade doesn't happen. They can try and trade Chris Davis for a different. Need a different bad contract? Yes. I don't know if that's out there, and they still maybe they they're paying Elvis Andrews a lot of money. Simeon. The A's have the according to the chat, the A's have the fifth richest owner. He just brainwashed the entire A's fan base. Well, I have him as the eighth richest owner. It's top ten, and they brainwashed yeah. the entire fan base to to feel like they're they small market. Well, we can't compete with the Yankees. We're small market. No, you can. Your owner just brainwashed you. Boom, boom. I lived in the Bay Area, so I used to get in a lot of fights with my friends about that. Because they, like, pride themselves on it. And I'm like, right. Yeah, the, no fan base money should be ball. proud of your owner spending less money and you winning games. That's not what you should be rooting for. <laughs> it's only if trophies. you win games. And however you need to get there, get there. Don't yeah. root for your owner to spend less money. That's that's not. Spend, that's, baby. That's a dumb thing to think as a fan. I'm sorry if you think that. Yeah. You well, don't get bonus points for the owner saving money. Yeah, no. Is he the Gap or Calvin Klein? That's what all, all I care about. I don't know, Trev. Nobody knows. Crush Davis, you think he's going to look good in the Ranger powder blue? Ooh. Yeah, he's a great yeah. baseball uni guy. Like He, okay. he makes yeah. a baseball uni look good. That's pretty big. Weird swing, weird swing. Oh, my gosh. You watch him. You don't. I don't understand the physics of it, but the guy has 
just extreme power. He's strong, no doubt about it, but it's fun to watch, man. When he gets hot, he gets hot. But he also, when he gets cold. I was cold. The A zoner is the son of the Gap founder. Okay. Got it. There you go. I was trying very hard to make a transition from Crush Davis into Cushy Dreams. Couldn't mm. think of it, so I just went with that. Cushy dreams. We got to tell you about these guys. 2020 was a rough year, and 2021 is starting out just as wild, and spring training hasn't even started yet. The world is crazier than ever, and our friends at Cushy Dreams can help. Cushy Dreams specializes in high-quality, smokable CBD, and CBD has been shown to help with anxiety, depression, pain relief, fighting inflammation, and more. Cushy Dreams Extraordinary CBD Rich Hemp Flavor comes in one-eighth ounce cans and pre-rolled joints. It is cannabis that ships discreetly to you and directly to all 50 states. They offer specific indica and sativa strains that deliver desired effects. Relax, create, hustle, peace, energy, and dream. Jake and I smoked some of the pre-rolled joints in the back alley in the Bronx the other day. Cushy Dreams, we got some... Some right here in front of Jake's face. Looks like weed. Looks a lot like weed. Smells kind of like weed. It's not weed. CBD. Trev, you like indica or sativa? Uh, I'm an indica person. Okay. If Cushy Dreams was to send you one of each, relax, create, hustle, peace, energy, dream, which would you choose? Mm. I'm a relaxed guy. Just I like the chill out mode. So, mm. yeah, Cushy Dreams, hook it up, baby. I thought you would have said hustle. Because you know, I got too much of that. I don't need any yeah. more hustle. I need okay. more relax. I get okay, that, that makes All right. sense. Look cool. at this guy. Look at me. Use code baseball for twenty percent off your next order, and you get free shipping with orders over twenty percent. Smoke your CBD with promo code baseball for twenty percent off today. Go to cushydreams.com. It's K U S H Y. That's why I was trying to do the Chris Davis thing because they're both. You think C? It's actually K. Crush Davis. Cushy Dreams. KD. There was a lot K's there, and, and I just could not figure it out. Damn. Next time. Next time. Yes. Uh, Jake, you a big advocate for Cushy Dreams? We had a good time the other day. Little Poppy was feeling pretty good. Was feeling cushy. I'm a cushy guy. Yeah. I'm a cushy guy. Cush. I live cushy. Cush life. Yeah. <laughs> Dexter- I got to try it out. I can't I can't. Uh, give it a fair rating until I, I try it out. Well. Just gonna, honest for the pod. We'll I'm send you honest. some. For the people. Trev, I might need to smoke some of this CBD and Cushy Dreams after Mm. these next bullet points we have. You know how mad Jake was at the Angels last year and Dylan Bundy? Mm. I think I've I've climbed over him on the ladder of being mad at the Angels. Jim's officially become the Angels hater on the pod. I mean, what are the Angels doing? They got Sledgers. They got Mm. Dexter Fowler and Juan Lagares. Get pitchers! Mm. Get pictures. <laughs> no one Don't, cares. No Dexter Fowler slander on this pod. I won't that, stand. I'm for not it. slandering any of them. I'm slandering the okay. fact if the A's release one more fucking bulletin and it's not we got Jake Odorizzi or we got Paxton or we got or we traded for a starting pitcher, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> They're basically like, like walking the around without shoes on and shopping for shirts. What are you doing? <laughs> I get it, man. It seems like that all you got to do is just go out there. This is me opening my checkbook up, and mm. this is me writing a check to a pitcher. That seems like all you got to do if you're already Moreno. You got the offense. You have real deal superstars, but you have no. <laughs> they got MVPs. <pitching. laughs> they got Guys, so many MVPs. <laughs> I mean, the fact that we're overlooking the Alex Cobb trade from the other week. Um, Love Alex Cobb. I love, love Alex Cobb. Cobb. Guess what? I, I, they're making a run at worst organization in baseball. <laughs> the Texas Rangers still have that title. The Angels are trying to be that way. If they didn't have Mike Trout, Anthony Rendon, and Shohei Otani, which are excellent players and signings, I would tell. I would say that at least they have those guys. But you're close. You are close, Perry. You are close, Artie and Perry. You're close. Dude, you know how like usually teams, Jake, the Yankees do this a lot, other teams do this, like they're our priority and they tell everyone else. Like we ran into Brett Gardner's agent at winter meetings and we we're like, hey, is Brett coming back? This was not this year, last year. And they said, well, the Yankees told us their priority is, is Cole and they'll get in touch with us after that. And they told Didi that too. And Didi took it as an insult. It was like, well, if I'm not your priority, I'm going to the Phillies. How are the Angels making any moves 
Like, how did they not say, we need top-tier starting pitching to match our top-tier hitting? We're not going to make a single move until we get that done. It's crazy. I mean, and let's not – Perry, the new the new GM, uh, I'm sure he wanted Trevor Bauer. Uh, again, you know, they, they're a team that's been known to spend – and we'll see what goes on. They did bring in Rendon last year. That was their big money thing. Um, you know, they traded for Cobb. They got Fowler. Uh, that was an interesting trade. St. Louis basically paying the majority of his contract. I think, you know, they end up getting a one-year, uh, like, one-and-a-half million contract, and he gets reunited with uh, Joe Madden, so they get some championship some championship love going on in the dugout there. Uh, yeah, man, I, I don't know. I, I start getting worried for my Angels fans. You know, I've been big on the Angels train. Uh, Bundy ended up working out for them, which had me eating bugs all of last year. Haney, solid. Like, I, they brought in Quintana and Cobb, and I think that could be it. Like, they got Reisel at the start of all this, which, hey, that was a nice move. You know, that's an MLB closer that you're putting at the back of your pen. Um, I, I'm worried that this is kind of it. Um, and if if they are, it's you know, it's kind of you look at all of it and what does it mean? Um, and and I don't know. I mean, they're they're believing in in a lot of guys that I don't necessarily believe in. You know, you know, you know how we talk about teams over leveraging themselves with real estate plays. I mean, to my knowledge, the Angels have taken on a pretty substantial real estate play around the stadium. They bought up a lot of stuff. They're putting these apartment buildings with some some shopping and breweries and all this stuff right around the stadium. And if that is the reason that they're not spending on pitching, I'm going to be absolutely furious. I don't have any information to back that up. That's just off the top of my head. If that's the reason, I'm going to be furious. It's the same shit with the Cubs and what they're doing around Wrigleyville, and they've over-leveraged themselves. Pandemic hits, boom, now they have to sell all their players. Stop it. You own a baseball team, dude. Do some baseball moves. It makes me upset when I think about it. Sorry. They got Sludgers for like nothing, a player to be named later. They got Fowler for like nothing. Um, I don't know, man. It's just weird. They extended Otani. They kind of basically bought out his arbitration, right? Yeah, two years. Two years, eight and a half mil. Are they going to trade everyone? Like, are the Angels going to have a decent start to the year? Look at all the free agents they have coming off this year, Jake. I mean, Pauls. What if Pauls? What if Pauls has a great two months and the Angels trade him for the second half of the season? He wins a World Series now with the Angels. Extend him, bring him back. How funny would that be? I think it's been worth. If like he had a twilight year last year of his career, they trade him, even good, and he wins the World Se- like a World Series without the Angels. That'd be fucking back to hilarious. St. Louis. Oh my! Oh, God. done. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, Dexter Fowler, now he's a free agent next year. Cobb is a free agent next year. Rice is a free agent here. Quintana is a free agent next year. The other Iglesias, Bundy, Haney. Yeah, so they just trade everyone. That seems like a something that they would do. Are they waiting for next year to go be like, in on this shortstop market? Are they waiting next year to be in on shortstop market? Something. Got a picture. They need a pitcher. I know, Jim. I don't. Who's a free agent pitcher next year? I have no idea. Bauer. If they out. told me, if they said, if they said, "Hey, Trev, stop giving us so much shit. Mm-hmm. We are waiting until 2022 when we have a lot of money coming off the books, including Albert Pujols." At least then I'd be like, "Okay, you guys have a plan." Because right now, what's the plan? Yeah, and that's uh, that's the other thing. I mean, if if we're looking at the books, Justin Upton, 23 mil this year, 28 the next. Albert still getting paid like you know th- those should be big numbers that should be going to players in their prime from this free agency and they're just not going to double up on him now so I uh, I don't know I mean Trout and Rendon is still gross in the middle of that lineup you hope Otani can bounce back and be the star of stars that he's supposed to be um, but yeah I think you know it, they did make moves they brought Jose Iglesias in um Quintana, Cobb, Reisel, and, you know, that's for a team that's spending, you know, $50 million on Justin Upton and Pujols at this point of their career, like, I think those are the moves. But it ain't going to get you anywhere. No. I don't know, man. Boo. There's still time. They could still sign Odorizzi, and we'd be like, okay, but. They were. They just spent, like, I love $30 Jake. million I don't even know dollars. That's they spent so much money already and didn't get any people. 
It's crazy, man. Uh, like they yeah. Cobb's they spent fifteen mil on Cobb. I think the Orioles ate some of that. How much did the Reds eat? They got ten mil on Reisel. They got eight mil for Quintana. Cobb's gonna be throwing that splitter up there all day long. Mm. I'm I'm in on Cobb this year. I'm in on him. I like Cobb. Uh, Angels will pay five million of Cobb salary. Okay, there you go. Still, collectively, when you so add I, it all up, there's still a good amount of well, money. Well, and that's what I think when you look at these transactions. You know, they end up getting Dexter Fowler for one point two million or whatever it's left. Lo- like, love I, that. That's I that's to help Joe Adele. Of, yeah, it, you know, you're gonna Trev. That is a really good point. Like Joe Adele came up, and Madden came out with that quote. That's really really tough. That you hope. Uh, Maybe Fowler can help him and, you know, help him and Madden's relationship because that's that's tough. Yeah, I think he's going to go there. He's going to mentor him. He's also going to give him some time maybe to develop in AAA. I don't think he's going to start after those comments. You can't really be starting in the big leagues, right? Yeah, so. I, mean, I don't think so. Uh, speaking of another Jonathan, Scope goes to the Tigers one year, four and a half million. He was with them last year. On a one-year deal, so scope up, baby. We got nothing here. You know, scope, Trev. Just playing against them. Um, the fun fact about scope, I probably mentioned it before. He's signed one of those like fan tracks, something. One of those deals where a company bought out a percentage of his future earnings for a lump sum payment up front. So I, I believe, I believe they gave him like two or 3 million up front for like 15% of his future earnings. So every time he signs a deal, I'm always interested in like, Hey, he's got to give taxes, got to give his agent fees and he's got to give fan tracks or whatever the company was a percentage. Like how much is he going to net? So he's one of those guys I always look at, but he was, that sucks. He got one of the bigger paydays from that system. Uh, that was probably four or five years ago before he started earning some big money. Weird. It's a weird thing. About that. Yeah, that seems crazy. Yachty goes back to the Cardinals. One year, nine mil. That's official now. So good job. Good for Yachty, man. Nine mil is a lot of money for what Yachty's currently bringing to the field, and I like Yachty. No, stop, Trev. Nine mil. He means he means so much to that pitching staff. You give him nine million dollars. I'm. I give nine million dollars to be a coach on that team. I'm very much. Well, he would be the highest paid coach by a, a ton. He so, should be. Okay, Yadi or Molina, highest paid coach in baseball. Huge. I'd give it to him. Huge. What other catchers are making that much money? Ooh, that'd be an interesting game. I don't know. We're not worried about his his <laughs> offense whatsoever anymore. It's strictly pitch framing, handling. The pitching staff and being clubhouse leader. That's what we're getting out of Yachty. And that's huge, Trev. But it's normally, huge. It's normally, worth $9 million. Normally that guy is 5 mil max. So I'm a, I'm a little worried about his 39-year-old knees and when he turns that in July this year. Makes hey, him we the... Can't, we, can't, we can't yell at organizations for not spending money makes and then him also the yell fifth, at organizations for spending money. Makes him so, the like, fifth this highest... This is a good sign. Congrats to Yachty. Congrats to Yachty. I'm happy for Yachty. <laughs> it's bizarre. He makes him the fifth highest paid catcher in all of baseball. Yeah. Seem, fifth, seem, fifth, it's like kind of like a legacy pay. Fifth highest so, fifth highest paid so, catcher and highest paid coach. I know we don't want to spend a ton of time on this, but um, you know, I remember when the twins brought Tory Hunter back. It was ten million bucks, something like that, two thousand fifteen. And a lot of people said that's an overpay. But from my understanding, the twins like did the math and like they figured they were already going to make at least half of that back just because Tory, what he does for the ballpark. So I'm assuming they factor that same thing in like, what does Yachty bring as far as marketability? What's he bringing to the, with the fans, all that stuff, it all factors in. I think, I agree, it was a no-brainer Trent. all offseason long. Just $9 million might be a little high for you guys, but I think he's worth it. I agree with all of that. Do you think any other team would pay Yachty $9 no. million? No, 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 because he's not worth that to any other team. Yes. Yeah. I think, that goes, hand, I think that goes hand in hand what you just said. Yeah. What was the yeah. coolest thing you ever saw Tory Hunter do? 
uh there was one game he wanted to fire us up and he like told me like i'm gonna fire us up today i didn't know what he was talking about but he like planned and orchestrated he got thrown out that game <laughs> and like threw a bunch of stuff like but he planned that I like and that. it did fire us up and like i would love to like be able to get to that point in my career where i could like hey guys guess what i'm gonna fire us up and get thrown out on purpose like i wasn't ever gonna be that type of player but tory hunter when he does it it's like okay any idea what year that was because i know kyle is already hunting that down yeah, 2015. Okay. He got tossed through some batting gloves. I think he took his jersey off. Like he 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 went for it. Okay. Were you laughing and in I the bet, dugout? I bet you could find some like points where he was like you know. <laughs> wanking. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, good job, Yadi. Good, good job, job Tori. Both end and I. Yadi, Tori. Yadi, 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 Yadi. Yadi Air, Tori Air. Red signed D Strange Gordon to a minor league deal. Chasing Streve signs with the minor minor deal with the Pirates. Um, the Mets signed Jonathan VR one year, three five point five million dollars. It's a good signing. That's kind of a real move. He, uh, it, we do have an image of Baltimore VR where he was racking up some war seasons. I think he had a couple four war seasons. I know the Marlins want to turn him into kind of a super util, uh, and the hitting's been down the past few years, but he's. He's a solid ball player, man, and I think if if you're the Mets, that's a guy, no matter what happens, you can kind of plug and play him. Is he going to play a full season for the Mets? He's gonna... Like starting? No, right? No, I mean, he, they have him as a util guy right now. He's a good which... util guy. I mean, he's started. He played 162 games in 2019, and you know since 2016, he's played a full season. His bat, it's a little empty, so it's good. It's a little empty, so I, I like it more as util – plays twice a week, three times a week guy. And when he got traded to Toronto, he went 7-0 on stolen bases. Yeah, so, I was going to say, base running is a big that? thing, you know, bring him in the back end of games. Defense isn't great, not bad. Yeah. I like it. I mean, yeah. His 2019 season was pretty good. His 2019 season was pretty good. Still 62 bags back in 2016. That's ridiculous. He was 25 then. He was young. Yeah, no, he's not going to do that, but he can still run. Like you said, Jake, He'll seven run. for seven last year. As a util guy, you like him. As a starter, you'd kind of be like, eh, well, eh. That's that's what I was saying. Uh, the Mets also signed Albert Almora. Sure. Lagar's replacement. They're still looking for it. Yeah. You got anything on that? Well, the Angels just got Lagara, so no. Oh, actually, I think the only thing that's really impactful about that is that uh, JBJ is still looking for a home. Mets were supposed to be in on him. I mean, it's looking like, it's looking like Houston, Boston, or Houston. I w- when I was reading an article about the Cardinals and Yachty, they mentioned they still need a right fielder, and one name they they brought up was uh, Josh Reddick. And like, yeah, I kind still of out love there. Josh Reddick in St. Louis. Like, I think that's like almost the perfect fit. Drinking a Bud Light, smoking a Bud. He's sneaky, such a good player, dude. Like, you think Reddick hates me? Because I like him still. Did you do something bad? What did you do, man? Talked about or just the, the Astros whole Astros cheating. thing. Yeah, yeah. He Reddick was like one of the first active players to like follow me, like way before. He doesn't hate you. Big stuff. No way. And he's very active with Savannah Bananas, as are we. Mm. I like him. You guys know how I feel about him, so I, I like him. I don't think he has any ill will towards you. I think the other thing we kind of missed of the Fowler thing is is the St. Louis side of that. Um, It'll be interesting to see if they make a move for an outfield or if they're going with all their young dudes. I mean, Dylan Carlson, Tyler O'Neill, Harrison Bader, uh, Justin Williams. I think they got another prospect, Noel, Gorman. I think he can play. Carlson's a lefty, right? And they need lefties? Switch. Um, so, yeah, I, it's going to be interesting if St. Louis really believes in that young crop of outfielders or if they're going to make, make a move for someone else. Carlson. Like Someone in the chat said Carlson's going to be the right fielder, but yeah, yeah, I saw that. I thought I think they like him a lot still. He hit a triple last year. <laughs> okay, I didn't hit one. True. I don't know. Yeah. Carlos Correa agrees to eleven point seven salary to avoid arbitration. Uh, Correa wanted twelve and a half million. The Astros wanted nine point uh, seven five million instead of going to. F- uh, file and trial. They came to an agreement, kind of right in the middle, eleven point seven. Good job. 
to hear you say file and trial all day. Now they're awaiting. Now they're in talks about an extension or something like that. Part of me wishes none of this Astro stuff ever happened because I would love to watch a guy like Carlos Correa and not have any preconceived notions about him. Well, like, I'd like to continue to dislike him just for the reasons I disliked him before the yeah. banging stuff. Before yeah, the banging stuff, I was very public. Loved Altuve. Loved Verlander. Um, enjoyed what um, Bregman did, but didn't like like him. But enjoyed that he was playing he the was heel. Bregman. He was playing the heel. Baseball needs that. Um, and didn't like Correa. But now it's all morphed. morphed. What? Is, what was it about Correa that was different than Bregman? Because I feel like they're kind of Correa is a great a weirdo, Trev. Mm. <laughs> One of the isn't Bregman kind of weird too though. No, Bregman just no. Bregman's just kind of like um, like LSU tough guy. Yeah, he's just kind of like uh, he plays the heel. Like he's like you know. I, I think, feel like Carlos Correa is more of a heel than Bregman. Bregman really no, wanted to be Carlos like Correa. Everybody. Carlos Correa turned on the heel after all of okay. this. Okay. Beforehand, he was just the weirdo. Like you ever see his Snapchats dancing? Mm. And like, I don't. And, way, and like, <laughs> he calls the Astros like super apex predators. He's just like, oh, dude, like, no one's yeah. ever told you you're not cool before. And you've made it all this way thinking you're cool. That's kind of the vibes Correa put out. Then he so turned little, it. Then he turned on Roddy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. a great comparison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's pretty uh, apt. <laughs> kind of like, ooh, no one's told you how to be normal before. Yeah, I mean, they, very school. similar backgrounds and career arcs. Like they were highly drafted, that's highly it. touted, it's, yeah. everything. So, yeah. like you could see Correa doing the mirror kiss pick. That's the kind Dude, of personality. It's, like it's, too. I I watched The Crown with Olivia, mm -hmm. and like you know when you grow up and you're in you're you're product of your environment. Everybody is. So like Correa has just been like babied and ha has had his ass kissed for the most of his life so he's never i don't know man it's just like it changes you as a person trev yeah. you uh you really hit something man what the a-rod stuff yeah both, yeah both number one overall picks six four oh shortstop Ooh. probably gonna slide over to third you kind of can't fault them because like i said they've really just had their ass kissed i'd be that way too yeah time. you know it's like dang you start to believe that shit Mirror kissing picks? I got those either way. I could definitely see that, Jim, 100%. <laughs> Imagine taking a pic of yourself kissing a mirror and, and not it not being satirical <laughs> and then publishing it, and okay. no one in your life likes you enough <laughs> to say, probably don't do this, man. Yeah. That's, that's who these guys are. <sighs> like, how do you not hey, have hey. one true friend that is like, hey, Alex, man. Don't know about that. Probably don't Aaron fucking Judge, do that. Your guy is get, is rubbing elbows. Who knows what's gonna go Dude, on? Dude, that suite was be... bizarre. That's a good suite. That suite was bizarre. Very. A Rod, Judge, Shaq, Storielli, Bob Kraft, um, J Lo, Ploof. BBD, BBD, what did you just giggle at? Is it? Can you share it? Uh, the next GM files guest is a good one. Oh, okay. wow! Just you giggling add. with excitement. How about an ad? It's, uh, somebody who we've had on this show. Oh, okay. oh, I know who it is. It's Dale Scott. <laughs> we need well, to get Dale back on. Love me some Dale Scott. Dale's that, been very aggressive. Dale's with me, so. running hot on the internet. And Dale like was running that. hot. <laughs> oh, he's got that private Twitter. No rules. He can do whatever he wants. That's all we have. There's the health and safety protocols just got agreed upon. There's no DH. There will be seven inning double headers. There will be man on second base to start extra innings. There will not be expanded rosters. It'll be 26 man roster, which was supposed to be the norm um, last year. They will expand to 28 man rosters come September for September call ups. That was supposed to be the same last year. The schedule isn't changing. The players are going to wear some tracking device to for contact tracing. I don't really know what that means. Uh, there's probably a lot of bullshit uh, eye wash protocols that they put in here um, to make it perceived that they care about this, even though they don't. And it's they're running back last year. So, like, I don't even think it's worth a full show to talk about or anything. Um, that's kind of it. Any surprises? No. Yeah. Okay. I would have liked them to, to give us a 10th inning 
straight up and then the 11th inning with the runner on second or, or something like that. Yeah, but I think that's totally the only with that. I think that's the only fear that two years of this becomes comfy. One year and I it's I I did not like it at all. I extra innings it became a Oh, no, I think that's the consensus. I'm saying that the players union and the uh, MLB like it is comfortable with it and it's oh, I, I, it's I, here. I, it's here to stay forever, I think. I don't like I I'm not we'll, happy. We'll with talk, it. They'll talk about it in the CBA. I'm going to be beating the drum. I think mm. you came up with it first, Jim, with the two innings first, and then and all then the giving num- us all the, the numbers say circus baseball. Yeah, eighty percent of extra inning games end in the tenth or eleventh inning, so I still think you can play those clean. But hey, a lot of players said they don't want to go to extra innings in the regular season. I just think the what regular season extra inning game walk offs used to be exciting. Now, if you don't walk off in the bottom of the ninth and you get to this, it, it really wasn't exciting at all, in my opinion. Yeah. It was I, – I used to make breakdown videos for every walk-off for, like, every team because it was just exciting. I don't think I made any last year because it was just it was boring. I also hate 7 double doubleheaders, if I'm being honest. I think when there you're a player, you're like, many. ah, it's okay because we can get through it. But as a fan, I just – I'm not into it. But barring any outbreaks – Corona related delays, there should not be that many doubleheaders. Usually, a, a f- team in a regular season maybe has four doubleheaders over the course of six months. Last year, we had, you know, yeah. a, a lot every single week. And I, I think, sparringly, who, who, who cares? It'll be all right. But yeah, I wasn't a big fan. But again, players liked them. But, and then no DH because the, the MLBPA doesn't want to give in before they don't have to. Which, fine. They don't want to negotiate before they have to negotiate. That's all. Mike Fires, Mike Fultonevich. Oh, yeah. one of you guys have an ERA under five deal. Forgot about that. Not bad. That's both, it. Both MFers. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> Michael Phelps sounds like an MFer. It's actually an uh, MPHer. That's all you got to know about that. Thanks for joining us, guys. We will be back at a later date. Guys, we will be Oh, shut up, Delay. It's on me. I always do this, BBD, and it's it's just my fault, and I'm dumb and stupid. Anything else? What? (laughs) (laughs) Nothing. Don't worry about it. What's today, Tuesday? We'll be back Thursday. We'll see you then. Sucks.